Have you ever wondered why your relationships are unsatisfying or unsuccessful? Welcome back to Savvy Psychologist. I'm your host, Dr. Monica Johnson. Every week on this show, I'll help you face life challenges with evidence-based approaches, a sympathetic ear, and zero judgment. Valentine's Day is approaching, and we all have relationships on our mind specifically how great it feels to be in a romantic relationship or how desperately we may want one or don't. Today, we're talking about myths that hinder our relationships. And speaking of these myths, I'm highlighting ones that affect all types of relationships. I want to help you out no matter your relationship style or state. Before we start, I want to quickly define what I mean by myth. In this context, a myth is anything that we believe that isn't true. We all have myths we believe, and it's important to be aware of them so that our actions aren't unduly influenced by faulty beliefs. Myth one, I don't deserve to get what I want or need. Do you have this underlying belief? Stop it, because unless you're Jeffrey Dahmer, you do deserve to have your needs and desires considered. When you walk into situations with this belief, it makes it incredibly easy to give up before you even get started. There are two approaches to this myth that I will recommend. The first is focused on the past. Explore for yourself where this belief may have come from. Did you have early caregiver relationships, unappreciative friends, or tumultuous romantic relationships that put this idea in your mind? This might be a good time to do a deep dive on your own or with therapist. The second is more present focused. Ask yourself, do I think it's important for others to get their needs met? Most will answer yes to this question. And if you're one of those people, why are you treating yourself differently? You're not special. If I deserve to get my needs met, so do you. Myth two. If I ask for help, it'll show that I'm a weak person. Is it hard for you to be vulnerable in relationships? Have others ever described you as prideful or guarded? Are you the type of friend who is always there for others, but never lets them into your struggles? If this describes you, your underlying belief is getting in the way of you building closeness and intimacy with others that you care about. I tell my patients all the time, That if you care about a person, you have to allow them the opportunity to show that they love you. Needing or desiring help is not a weakness, particularly for us as humans. We tend to be social by nature and do better in groups than solo. One Power Ranger is a badass, but together they form the Megazord and are pretty unstoppable. Most of us are pretty adept at facing day-to-day issues, but things pile up and pile on. You might also experience an unexpected loss, like getting fired from a job or losing a loved one. By denying yourself the aid of others, you limit not only the depth of the relationship, but what you can accomplish in your own life. Myth three, I can't handle a no. This myth will stop you from even having relationships with others. I've seen people so afraid of rejection that they don't even show up to the party and simultaneously complain about being lonely. I will 100% validate that rejection sucks and the blow of it can range from a paper cut to a bat to the head. What you also need to realize is that you're not the boy in the plastic bubble you're actually quite capable of taking some damage and walking away. Not 90s action movie level of taking damage and walking away, but far more than you think. It's important to assess your relationship goals and operate based on your goal and not on your fear. Think through the worst case scenario that can occur if rejection happens. Then explore what interpersonal skills you could use with the person and ways that you can self-soothe yourself after the incident. If you do this process enough, you'll realize that you can in fact handle a no and that rejection occurs less often than you think. Myth four, 
I should be willing to sacrifice my own needs for others. You might be thinking, but isn't that being a good person? In moderation, yes. However, individuals who hold this belief do it too much. Are you the person who is always inconveniencing themselves for others? When was the last time you had a moment for yourself? If you're wondering where those new gray hairs came from, it's probably because you're not taking care of yourself. You also leave yourself vulnerable to being taken advantage of when you adopt the habits related to this myth. It's super fun to demonize folks for taking advantage of people, but it's human nature to go for the easy yes. Don't be easy. Have boundaries and require others to respect them. Depending on the state of your relationships, you may lose some of them. There may be people in your life who don't want to deal with this quote-unquote new you. If they aren't willing to work on your relationship, it's okay to let them go and focus on the ones that can be repaired and improved. Myth five, I shouldn't have to ask or say no to things. People should know what I want and do it. This is a classic mind-reading belief. I see people get into fights all the time over it. This is all I will concede. Yes, if a person has known you for a long time and you have been forthcoming in deepening your relationship with that person, it is possible for them to make educated guesses about your responses, behaviors, or viewpoints. None of that means that a person is psychic and can read your mind and be aware of every need that you have. It also doesn't take into account that this person has their own experiences that may make it difficult for them to make accurate, educated guesses about your desires. Think about how frustrated you would be if you ordered IKEA furniture and it came without instructions. Then, when you called Ikea, they told you that you should already know how to put a dresser together. Give the people that you trust or that you're trying to develop trust with the instruction manual. The people who want to have a relationship with you will try their best to follow the steps. Let me know which of these myths are limiting your relationships. Follow and comment on Instagram at KindMindPsych. You can also reach me via email at psychologist at quickanddirtytips.com or leave a voicemail at 929-256-2191. The Savvy Psychologist is a Quick and Dirty Tips podcast. It's audio engineered by Steve Rickyberg with script editing by Adam Cecil. Our assistant manager is Emily Miller and our marketing and publicity assistant is Davina Tomlin. Follow Savvy Psychologist on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. That's all for this week's episode of Savvy Psychologist. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next week.